Hello everyone, I am Arixel Di Cantila. I haven't had introduced myself last time since this is my first time attending this class. Again, I'm Arixel Di Cantila, 24 years old. I am a licensed civil engineer and is currently working for the Philippine Sports Authority as an engineering assistant. I am currently residing at Minawag de Polog City, married with a wonderful husband and blessed with one beautiful child. For now, that would be all. I hope you'd listen to my presentation. Shown in the screen are pictures of people. Let's identify their relationship with one another. In the first picture, we can see that the two men are having conversation. They are shaking their hands with each other. Handshaking is a type of greeting commonly used in businesses. Therefore, I guess that the two of them are business partners. In the second picture, the two girls are happily having coffee, chit-chatting with one another. Oh, how I miss those times that we don't have to use face masks. Well, if I'm not mistaken, these two girls are friends. I know most of you can relate to this picture. We all know what the relationship of these two are. Based on what they're doing, it is clearly, clearly evident that they are lovers. You know, relationships are built for two people like one plus one. Look how happy they are. There are three families, mother, a father, with their beautiful child. Do you know why I've shown you these pictures? Actually, in our topic today, we will be talking about relationships and research. But what do we mean by that? In research, it is important to understand relationship between two or more things that are being studied at. And these things that I'm talking about is our topic for today. And they are called variables. It is just important for us to learn the relationships between variables to draw the right conclusion from a statistical analysis. It is understood that after you pre finish this presentation, you will be able to explain the meaning of variable and give at least five variables that might be investigated by business researchers. Identify how a variable differs from a constant. Distinguish between a quantitative and a categorical variable. Explain how independent and dependent variables are related and produce an example of a moderator variable. That's great, right? In the next slide, I will be showing you a class of objects. Now let's determine what classes are present. Okay, this is a class of gender. The females on the left and the males on the right. They are both class of genders. Despite being on the same class, they are all still different from one another, right? Some has fair skin, black hair, short hair, and one has beard. Next, we have a class of animals. They are all considered as animals. However, just like before, they are different from one another. We have raccoon here, another one is a leopard, the other is a monkey. Okay, the next one looks just the same, right? They are all eyes, however, they differ in eye color. The other one has black, this one has blue, it has green. Oh, what a wonderful eyes. Okay, this fourth picture, it is a class of flowers. All beautiful and colorful. They're all flowers, but they differ in kind. They differ in the size, shape, and colors of their petals. They also differ in their leaves. And lastly, this is a class of chairs, right? It stands for the many different objects that we sit on that possess legs, a seat, and a back. Notice how these classes are grouped even if they are differ or vary with one another. At this point, it is important to introduce the idea of variables, since a relationship, as mentioned before, is a statement of variables. But what is a variable? A variable is a concept, a noun that stands for variation within a class of objects such as chair, gender, eye color, achievement, motivation, or running speed. A variable is any characteristics or quality that varies among the members of a particular group. Then, look, 
Notice that the individual members in the class of a objects, however, they must differ or vary to qualify the class as a variable. If all members of a class are identical, we do not have a variable. We have what we call as, right, constant. Such characteristics are called constants, since the individual members of the class are not allowed to vary, but rather are held constant. A constant is any characteristic or quality that is the same for all members of a particular group. In any study, some characteristics will be variables, while others will be constants. Very good. An example may make this distinction clearer. Suppose a researcher is interested in studying the effects of reinforcement on student achievement. The researcher systematically divides a large group of students, all of whom are ninth graders, into three smaller subgroups. She then trains the teachers of these subgroups to reinforce their students in different ways. One gives verbal praise, the second gives monetary rewards, the third gives extra points for various tasks the students perform. In this study, the reinforcement would be the variable, okay? While well, the grade level of the students would be constant. Did you understand the concept of variables and constants? That's great! There are many variables out there in the world that can be investigated. Obviously, we can't investigate them all, so we must choose. Researchers choose certain variables to investigate because they suspect that these variables are somehow related and believe that discovering the nature of this relationship, if possible, can help us make more sense out of the world in which we live. Variables can be classified in several ways. They can be in quantitative and categorical. One way is to distinguish between these two. Quantitative variables exist in some degree along a continuum from less to more, and we can assign number to different individuals or objects to indicate how much of the variable they possess. They take on numeric values, while on the other hand, categorical variables do not vary in degree, amount, or quantity, but are qualitatively different. They take on names or labels. Two obvious examples are height. John is 6 feet tall and Sally is 5 feet 4 inches. Another is weight. Mr. Adams weighs only 150 pounds and his wife's 140 pounds, but their sand tips the scales at an even 200 pounds. We can also assign numbers to various individuals to indicate how much interest they have in a subject, with 5 indicating very much interest, 4 much interest, three, some interest, two, little interest, one, very little interest, zero, indicating no interest. If we can assign numbers in this way, we have the variable interest. Furthermore, examples of categorical variables include trees, aircrafts, animals, eye color, gender, religious preferences, occupation, position on a baseball team, and most kinds of research treatments or methods. I bet you already understand quantitative and categorical variables. Then, let's try this. Which ones are quantitative variables and which ones are categorical variables? Very good. Great. Awesome. Excellent. Amazing. Wow, how many did you get right? Oh, very good. Congratulations. Let's now move on. Did you know that researchers often study not only just the relationship between one quantitative and one categorical variables, they also study the relationship between two quantitative variables, two categorical variables, and one quantitative and one categor categorical variables, and so forth. Let's take a look at their examples. Two quantitative variables. We have the age and amount of interest in school. Reading achievement and mathematics achievement. Classroom attendance and student motivation. 
amount of time watching television, and aggressiveness of behavior. Two categorical variables. Examples are Method used to teach reading and reading achievement Counseling approach and level of anxiety Nationality and liking for school Student gender and amount of praise given by teachers One quantitative and one categorical variable. Examples are Ethnicity and father's occupation Gender of teacher and subject taught Administrative style and college major Religious affiliation and political party membership We now understand that quantitative and categorical variables Let's now take a look at another way of classifying variables a common and useful way to think about variables is to classify them as independent or dependent. Independent variables are those that the researcher chooses to study in order to assess their possible effects on one or more other variables. An independent variable is presumed to affect or somehow influence at least one other variable. The variable that the independent variable is presumed to affect is called a dependent variable. In common sense terms, the dependent variable depends on what the independent variable does to it and how it affects it. At this point, let's check your understanding. Suppose a researcher plans to investigate the following questions. Very good. Great. Awesome. You did great. But did you know that independent variables may be either manipulated or selected? A manipulated variable is one that the researcher creates. Such variables are called manipulated variables or treatment variables. Sometimes researchers select an independent variable that already exists. In this case, the researcher must locate and select examples of it rather than creating it. That's great, right? But have you heard about moderator variables? A moderator variable is a secondary independent variable that has been selected for study in order to determine if it affects or modifies the basic relationship between the primary independent variable and the dependent variable. Let's make use of the previous activity and let's try to determine the moderator variable. Very good. Great. Awesome. We have learned many things today. I know most of you already had these lessons during high school days, but I hope listening to my presentation helped you remember those things again. Now, let's look at the main points of this presentation. Now, I want you to share your insights. Can you define variable in your own words and give at least five variables that might be investigated by business researchers? Can you differentiate variable from a constant? 
Can you give an example of quantitative and a categorical variable? Can you describe an independent and dependent variables? Can you produce an example of a moderator variable? Great! Thank you for listening to my report. I hope you'd gain some knowledge. Again, this is RxLD Cantila signing off. Ciao!